I just came off a 72 hour fast and I am going to be eating today for the first time after three days. So I will share with you some tips and meal ideas and what you can and cannot do when you're eating coming off of your 72 hour fast. Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Janet and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so YouTube can let you know when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, then welcome back to my channel. Good morning you guys. I am starting off my day after fasting with my coffee. I'm having my normal coffee here. I made it the same way as I do all the time. I will link a video here on how I make my coffee, but it was delicious today, I'm telling you. I'm also going to start the day off by having my favorite meal, which I had when I first started keto, and that is the egg and bacon bowl. And this was my favorite meal. I had it pretty much every day when I started keto and it kept me on track. It's full of flavor, kept me full and highly recommend it if you guys are still losing weight on keto. It's just a basic recipe that anybody can make and it covers all of your macros, high in fat and full of flavor. So here I am just um, getting two slices of bacon. It was half frozen, so hence why it looks um, kind of torn apart because it is torn apart. <laughs> And I'm just frying up that bacon. Now, the key for when you're coming off of a 72-hour fast is that you're actually going to want to have things that are high in protein. So not necessarily worrying about um, the fat. And definitely you don't want carbs when you're coming off of a fast. So um, this meal was kind of 50-50, I would say. It's definitely high in fat, but it was also high in protein. And I didn't have too, too much. I had the two slices of bacon that you see here with the macros that I'm showing you. And I had, um, I think it was two eggs. Um, and it was it wasn't a lot of fat, but it was still higher in fat than I probably would have liked to um, use to break my fast. But I thought this was probably one of my best options um, that I knew would kind of like make me feel full so that I wasn't kind of going into binging. But to be honest, you guys, when I um, got off of that 72 hour fast, I actually could have broke my 72 hour fast the night before. Um, because when I um, had my coffee, it was actually about 82 hours and I didn't feel hungry. Like it's amazing that it, it controls your hunger because I was in such high ketosis as well. And, you know, it just definitely helps doing a fast to get your hunter, uh, hunger under control and to get your eating under control. Because of course you don't want to ruin it by going out and eating like a horrible meal or eating, um, just binge eating anything that you have in the house. You want to stick with it. You want your digestive system to start working again because after 72 hours, your digestive system does shut down. So um, I just wanted to mention that. So make sure um, you're doing doing the fast correctly. There's a lot of information on the internet. Like I've mentioned, Christina fasts. Um, she actually did a 72 hour fast at the same time as I did. And we didn't even know that we were doing that actually. So it was quite funny. Okay. So I am doing two eggs here. The second egg, as you can see, um, some of my fresh farm eggs, they have a little bit of a red tinge to them and I don't like those. So once I started pouring that, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to have that. It doesn't happen very often, but with our chickens, it just does happen with farm fresh eggs. So I ended up throwing that one out. Um, I could have probably cooked it and then gave it back to our chickens because it is very good for them to have their own chickens and it helps with egg production. But anyways, I just had two eggs here that I am going to lightly scramble in the bacon fat that I had used for my bacon. This is what gives it all of the flavor. And this was amazing. Like I said, this was my favorite meal. I'm going to add some garlic salt and um, it just gives it a little bit more flavoring. And I'm going to also add some black pepper as well too. 
And that's all the seasonings I'm going to be adding. Um, actually, I think I did add the everything but the bagel seasoning because you guys already know that that's my favorite seasoning and I am almost out. I say that every time, but I am getting near the end, you guys. So I definitely will give, um, Costco I noticed has some there, so I'm going to be buying that on my next Costco trip. But that's it it you guys for flavoring for the eggs this gives it a lot of good flavoring the bacon drippings definitely uh, makes up for it and i also wanted to mention with this egg scramble uh, i always used to have it with a half of an avocado as well too i would slice it up into chunks and i would have that with this egg scramble bowl um, but i left that out today because we are going for high protein today okay so um, i'm going to uh, put all of this into a bowl and then we're just going to assemble our egg scramble bowl so as you guys know that's two eggs in there I didn't want to eat too too much for my stomach to kind of get overwhelmed um, I normally on a normal day I probably would have had three scrambled eggs and three slices of bacon but I just wanted to cut it down just so that my body had time to um, process in my digestive system and I'm just going to cut up my bacon and put that in Also, if you guys wanted to, you probably could add some um, fried or steamed vegetables. So I did a little bit of research online and by no means am I an expert whatsoever, but some of the information that I did find say that you can use um, like fried veggies or steamed veggies and that's not going to hurt your digestive system too, too much. So you can probably put some peppers or some onion in with this as well too and it's not going to bother you. I am going to add a little bit of hot sauce because I do like a little bit of hot sauce with this. And I'm also going to add some cheddar cheese. Um, I just added a little bit of a handful. I would have added more probably on a normal day, but I just didn't want to overdo it with like the dairy or just any sort of like, you know, higher fat. I just wanted to kind of keep it really, really simple. So I'm going to add the shredded cheese there. And this is when I would normally add the avocado. I would just put a little bit of avocado on the top, but I did leave that out. But this is an excellent meal for those of you that are losing weight on keto. This was my go-to meal. And look at that. It was so good, you guys. I found that I was eating it too fast, so I kind of slowed down eating it. But it was delicious. Absolutely delicious. So great meal. So the next meal that I'm going to make, I ended up having two meals for that day. And I thought, you know what, I want my second meal to be high in protein. So I decided to make uh, chicken stuffed with asparagus. And then I had some leftovers of the Brussels sprouts and the elk sausage that Jimmy had made on day two of my fasting. How rude. But my daughter had come down to visit. And um, so we made supper and she loves Brussels sprouts. She loves her dad's Brussels sprouts. So that's what we made for her and she loved it. So I decided to keep some for myself because I knew that I would want some and that I could have it after I was done my fast. So what we're going to do first, these these chickens were really, like these chicken breasts were very, very thick and big. Um, so I decided actually in this video, you guys, I'm using my air fryer for this recipe. So I was so excited to use it. I forgot to even like season my chicken with anything like salt, pepper, my chicken spice that I always use. I forgot to do all of that, which I normally would have done right now when I'm butterflying these chickens. Totally forgot. But I am going to stuff it with the artichoke and asiago dip. This is my favorite dip of all time. I find it at Walmart and it is zero net carbs and really, really good ingredients. And it's my favorite thing for dipping pork rinds. I use it with my vegetables. Like I usually saute some zucchini and some mushrooms. And I love putting this dip on top of that. It tastes amazing, you guys. And it's reasonably priced because I do use quite a bit of it when I do use it because it is so high in fat and it's great for keto. But I'm just going to put those on both sides of my chicken. And 
And then what I'm going to do is put some cheese. I'm going to use a little bit of cheddar cheese and I'm also going to use a little bit of the Parmesan cheese. So I'm just putting a little bit of cheddar on one side. Then I'm going to put a little bit of the Parmesan on the other side. And then after that, I'm actually going to stuff it with a few asparagus. So I'd clean my asparagus, as you can see on the left hand side, and I'm going to put, it was about three stems, and I just put it in there, in the chicken, three or four, and then I just stuff it, and I didn't have any toothpick, toothpicks, but since these were so big, they actually closed on their themselves and they stayed fine when they were closed on themselves and that is it you guys like i said i forgot to use seasonings that was my bad i would have definitely used more seasonings on it but you know what it still turned out pretty pretty good i don't think we got enough time to sort out all the fights yeah. to sort out all the lies oh baby yeah oh, no. There was a part of me that knew that And still I'm caught by surprise oh. I thought you'd always be mine oh, yeah. I guess our dreams fell asleep There's no passion in the comatose yeah. Baby going down, 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 down yeah. Baby going down, 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 down yeah. Tried so hard to stay afloat Yeah, we keep moving like the river goes yeah. Baby going down, 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 down Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought it's time I'm letting you go for sure, I just thought I should let you know Get yeah. down now, no one's no more, no I got so high on a low, that's when I love you the most Now I thought I should let you know Get yeah. down now, no one's no more, no I really thought we had it covered all right, we are ready to put them in the air fryer, you guys. So three of these huge uh, chicken breasts did fit in my air fryer. I didn't get the hugest air fryer um, because we are a family of three. And, um, you know, eventually it'll just be Jimmy and I. So I just got kind of the smaller one. I will insert... Um, or actually, you know what? I have the link down below and that will give you the size information. I got it off of Amazon. You can get the exact same one that I have linked down below if you look further in the description. So I'm going to put those all in the air fryer. I put some parchment paper on the bottom and I had it preheated already and everything. So we are going to put that in our air fryer at 360 for 16 minutes but I need your guys's help here for air fryers because sorry 350 for 16 minutes but the chicken wasn't done like I one piece was done because it was the thinnest piece the one on the left I do check my chicken all the time with a thermometer highly recommend you guys are doing that but the two other ones on the right weren't they were very thick like I said they were big pieces of chicken but how do you guys figure out the timing and the temperature for your meals that you're cooking in the air fryer so with this air fryer I did get the information booklet that came with it and it gives me kind of an overview but obviously all chicken and steak is going to be a different thickness different size how do you guys determine what you're going to cook it at and for how long? If you can please let me know in the comments if there's any easy way to figure that out, maybe by weight or if there's some sort of diagram or um, somewhere to look that you can figure out what to cook it at because I think that's my problem because I'm not, this was the first time using it. Um, but you know, obviously I don't want to be checking it and then turning it back on and everything like that, right? So that's just the problem that I, I had with this scenario of um, making these. So I did put it back in for another six minutes. Um, even the one on the left wasn't cooked at this time, but the second time around this time here is when I actually take it out and then I let the others two cook. I believe it was for an additional like another eight minutes. And then after that, it was finally um, reached its temperature of 185. But if you guys can help me, that would be wonderful. Um, I know like my other air fryer, I think all we cooked in it was probably like chicken wings and some bacon and just standard stuff. But I wanna start using this a lot. So if there's any sort of tips that you guys can give me, make sure you comment down below. I love hearing from you guys anyways down in the comments. I always respond to every single comment. So please let me know down below. 
All right, so that one on the left was done, and that is the one I ended up taking out and using for my meal because I was hungry. <laughs> so the family had to wait for their others uh, another 10 minutes. So as you can see, I warmed up the uh, elk sausage and Brussels sprouts on the side. I warmed that up in the microwave, and I'm just going to add my piece of chicken as well too to this meal, and that is all that I'm having. It was high in protein, some nice steamed fried vegetables because they were both steamed and fried for those Brussels sprouts, and my stomach was perfectly fine this whole entire day, even the nighttime. I felt wonderful that day still. So that just goes to show you guys on what you can eat when you're coming off of an extended fast and make sure that you're doing things high in lean protein, you guys. And this is the final product and it was absolutely delicious. I just wish I put more seasonings on my chicken. That's the end of the video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope it gives you some ideas for you coming off an extended fast. If anybody has done a long extended fast, let me know down below. I love hearing your comments, and I wanna know if you guys even had tried fasting other than intermittent fasting. Like I said before, I was doing um, an alternate day fasting in order to get to my goal, and it had a lot of benefits. And I think I might implement like a 24 hour fast once a month because it is very good for your body, even though that I am close to my goal weight, but I think it's just good for overall health and definitely your digestive system. And you guys know I have trouble with my digestive system, with my IBS, my irritable bowel syndrome, and I feel like it just definitely helps with everything once you get everything to process and your food digests fully and gives it that 24 hour reset. But definitely the longer fast, the better. I don't suggest that you start off with a 72 hour fast. Um, if you're doing intermittent fasting, that's great. I would start with a 24 hour fast though. So let me know down below if you're interested in doing that. If you like these sort of fasting videos, I would love to hear from you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so that YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.